There is something about fighting games I like. It gives me a good feeling laying the smackdown on people or in my case the computer. Every game in the genre plays differently from each other. If you are looking for something fast paid, then Marvel for the Capcom 3 may be your option. If you are looking for something slow or realistic, Virtual Fighter 5 may be your other option. Nobody is wrong when it comes to their favorite game, series, or version in the genre. However, I need to talk about something important. And I'm going to come out and say it. I'm cutting out the fluff and the filler. <sighs> I'm not good at fighting games. Yeah, you heard me right. I like the genre, but I'm not good at it. I use the normal controller. I don't use any fighting game term. I don't care about tier lid. I use who I like. In other words, I'm casual at fighting game. I smell casual. However, that does not mean I don't have some type of understanding about fighting game. I know some info about characters from some game. I try to follow what the heck is going on with the plot with some games like Tekken and DOA. I know a little bit of Tekken mostly related to the main Mishima family. But if you ask me to follow other Tekken characters, then I may have some trouble. As for how to play, I have a basic understanding of the game. I try to avoid button mashing. I use my energy for Mario Party. I know how to do some of the input like down forward and down back. And I can do some of the super combo input. I have a hard time with doing or understanding cancelled to make bigger and better combos. If I do something cool, more likely it would be in training mode or by accident. Now, I may not be good at fighting games, however, I know BS when I come across it. Most of the BS come from bosses in fighting games. And yet, I know some of these bosses were made to take your money at arcade. But that is still BS. There are options to make a few fighting games easier or simpler for new players or casuals. In Marvel vs. Capcom 3, you can make the control simpler. Super can be done easily, however, at the cost of doing a fan option. In Tekken 7, you can do a basic combo by pressing the left or right punch three times in a row. But your fighting option become limited, mostly when it comes to punches. However, Tekken 7 does have another better option to allow a player to do harder input moves by holding a shoulder button and pressing one of the face buttons. It's hard to say if these options make fighting games better for some people. My biggest problem with fighting games is that it's hard to remember everything and how to do the best combo. At best, I can only do a 3 to 5 hit combo. This can be a problem in some fighting games than others, and this is only a problem for me. If you would ask me to remember a dance in Judd Dance, I could do that. If you ask me if I have ever got a triple A in DDR, I have done that. Another point is that I play a game called Splatoon 2. I mostly play the Diamond Run mode and I'm good at it. The mode had you working as a team to beat enemies and their bosses. You need to reach a quota for all three waves to win. I play it so much to a point where I have used every weapon and each type in the game. However, if you would ask me to do the same type of thing for a fighting game, 
I couldn't do that to save my life. It doesn't help that each fighting game in the series had different mechanics and how they feel. One thing about fighting games I'm aware of is that some of them have aged poorly. I could play Tekken 3, but not 1 or 2. Out of every genre, fighting games in my opinion age the worst when it comes to older games. Because of how each game feels doing input and control, not because of character roster or mechanic. With my history and take on the genre done, I will be sharing my knowledge of fighting game. I will be talking about a handful of games that I'm into or have some info on. First up, we have Street Fighter. There are many games in the theory from the mainline game to character being in crossover. I will talk about Ultra 2 and Ultra 4. I'm not sure which game I like more, but I think both are great. Ultra 4 had a lot of playable fighters, but the game gives you the option to use different versions of characters, which is probably heaven for pro fighting game players. However, I don't know how to use all the characters and know all the info for each version for everyone to make the most of their ability. Ultra 2, I feel, is a little bit easier to understand without having to worry about so many characters. The game had a few options to make it easier. If you remember, FF4 is on the 3DS with touch control option allowing you to use input, ultra, and super combo with one touch. Ultra 2 had the same option, but you can map it to one of the buttons. I can use normal input like down back and use one button to use hard input like Akuma Raging Demon. Moving on to a free fighter, we have Tekken. I'm more familiar with the older Tekken game because when I look at Tekken 7 characters, I'm always like, who are you people? Combat is fat paid, each button controls each arm and leg, and combos are a bit easier to do than other games. I used the option to make harder input moves easier and to make the rage art easy to pull off with doing my normal input as well. The training mode is very helpful and offers players to see the commandlet in-game. Tekken or 3D are games that I could get into more than 2D style fighting games. Now for a different type of fighter, we have the arena fighter. There are not a lot of arena fighters I like. Power Stone 1 and 2 are hand down my favorite. With a few others I like, I will only be talking about Power Stone 2 in this video. PS2 is not that in-depth when it comes to the fighting mechanic. The game made up for it by offering a good 4-player fighting game and making the game feel like an adventure. A solid beginning may lead to a perfect ending. Go for it. You have a normal attack and an action attack. You can pick up and drop items and use machines like a tank. The biggest thing that made the theory stand out is the use of the power stone. Collecting free will transform your fighter into an almost invisible and unstoppable force. But you better make the most of that power by using your more powerful normal attack and one of your power fusion moves. What annoys me most about Arena Fighter is that too many of them are anime games. And the anime games always have the same type of camera angle and simple gameplay that always annoys me. The fighting mechanics are too easy or boring. While I do like the idea of a fighting game to be easy and simple to play, but if a game is too simple, using an IP and making low effort gameplay or overall boring gameplay, then I find myself not wanting to play it. It doesn't help that every time news about an anime that had some type of fighting or action 
it getting a game, it always get turned into the same type of arena fighter. Press one button for a normal attack. Press one to do a special move like a quirk. And press one button to use an ultimate move. It happened to my hero, one punch man, and whatever the heck jump for what. Not every anime get an arena fighter. Look at Dragon Ball Fighter and Persona 4. I know Persona 4 became a game first than an anime, but still. Persona 4 and Dragon Ball Fighter is not an arena fighter. They are 2D fighting games. The developer made the game their own fighter with great mechanics. Pokin and Arm have the same type of camera angle like other arena fighters, but the games have their own different gameplay mechanics to make them different. Please, can the developer or whoever stop turning anime games into arena fighters? Even if the gameplay is something I don't want to play, at least it's not another anime arena fighter. Or one of those anime gotcha games. Now for an anime game I play. Here we have Naruto Clash of Ninja. There are five games that came to the UN. I will only be talking about and recommending to Revolution 2 and Revolution 3. All of the games are easy to get into, which can be a good or bad thing depending on your point of view. The game is 3D, but really feels like a 2D fighter, with the ninja being able to step that way like in Tekken. It's kinda hard and, and or weird to explain, but bear with me. Combos are easy to do by pressing only the B and A button and sometimes needing to press up, down, forward, or back. Your combo can end differently by pressing A or B at the end of one. Doing an ultimate move only uses one button and just about all of the ninja have the same throw. The ninja can step die by pressing L or R. You can escape from combo by pressing L or R when getting hit by an attack. While the game is easy to get into, the game theory has some type of depth to the overall gameplay, mechanic, and mode. In Ninja 2, we have normal one-on-one -on -one fighting, a free-on-free -free mode like KOF, multi-man battle, and four-player battle. The game had handicap like making your opponent weaker to even removing your opponent's ability to block. Yet, you can stop your opponent from blocking. What's odd about Ninja 2 is that you can play as a dog and a puppet, and yet it sounds and plays weird. Moving on to Revolution 2. Blocking was a big problem in Ninja 2. The computer will block everything like crazy when their level is on 3 or 4. Revolution 1 fit the problem by adding a guard meter. The game does have handicapped, but not like Ninja 2, meaning no removing blocking anymore. Other changes and additions added to Revolution games are Paper Bomb, Taking Cover Behind Crate, Stage Transition, Two different substitutions, reflecting kunai, tag battled, and more ultimate moves. These ultimate moves are done by pressing down or being in mid-air and pressing a button. Some can only be done if your health meter is 40% or lower. Revolution 3 is more of the same with the character being older. Some ninjas like Naruto have a few different or new moves, but feel familiar enough to you normally. To other ninjas like Sakura, playing is completely different from how they play in older games, and with new ninjas as well. The game did have online battles, but one last genre, 
the platform brawler. And you know you can't talk about this genre without talking about Super Smash Brothers. I follow the game and know where each character is from. Ultimate is almost a perfect game. But with Nick Pit here and there and dealing with the poor online. Smash is the easiest fighting game theory to get into. It's the most I have played out of all fighting games. Mostly back in the Brawl and Wii U days. Yes, I said Brawl. I am not a pro at Smash, but I understand a lot of mechanics in the game. I love the feel of Smash's platform nature. I get because I love platforming games. The game even had fighting game characters from Tekken, Street Fighter, and Fatal Fury. I wish I knew how to use all of the characters. But Ultimate had a lot of people that I don't care if I don't know how to use everyone. What is more important is that I know the playstyle of each fighter to beat them. What I like about the fun factor and how it doesn't have to be like other fighting games. From the item, Pokemon, and health character the game used. Yet I use item for the most part when I play. I like to have fun. To the gimmick and crazy thing that happen on level. I don't play a lot of ultimate because I have everything in the game. But ultimate is a game I wish I had more time to play. I don't have the time to get better or learn more about fighting games. I have a lot of things to do in life, not to mention trying to do something about my back catalog of games does not help me. The one thing I do like about fighting games is the use of the training mode to learn a thing or two. Regardless if you're a pro or a casual, we can agree on one thing. We all hate online lag.